the poem I'm going to read today is actually my favourite poem. Um, my dad actually used to read it to me before bedtime. Um, it's not really a bedtime story, it's um, more of a stuff of nightmares. <laughs> but the reason I've picked it is because the theme for poetry day is vision. And I've always found that the, the wording in this poem um, is, is so strong. I've always had the images in, in my mind, they're quite vivid. And the poem is called Flannan Isle. Though three men dwelt on Flannan Isle to keep the lamp alight, as we steered under the lee, we caught no glimmer through the night. A passing ship at dawn had brought the news, and quickly we set sail to find out what strange thing might ail the keepers of the deep sea light. The winter day broke blue and bright, with glancing sun and glancing spray, while o'er the swell our boat made way, as gallant as a gull in flight. But as we neared the lonely isle, and looked up at the naked height, and saw the lighthouse towering white, with blinded lantern that all the night had never shot a spark of comfort through the dark. So ghostly in the cold sunlight, it seemed that we were struck the while with wonder all too dread for words. And as in the tiny creek we stole beneath the hanging crag, we saw three queer, black, ugly birds, too big by far, in my belief, for cormorant or shag. Like seamen sitting bolt upright upon a hard tied reef, but as we neared, they plunged from sight without a sound or spurt of white. And still too most to speak, we landed and made fast the boat and climbed the track in single file, each wishing he were safe afloat on any sea, however far, so it be far from Flannan Isle. And still we seemed to climb and climb as though we'd lost all count of time and so must climb for evermore yet all too soon we reached the door the black sun blistered lighthouse door that gaped for us ajar as on the threshold for a spell we paused we seemed to breathe the smell of lime wash and of tar familiar as our daily breath as though it were some strange scent of death and so Yet wondering, side by side, we stood a moment, still tongue-tied, and each with black foreboding eye, the door, ere we should fling it wide, to leave the sunlight for the gloom, till, plucking courage up at last, hard on each other's heels we passed into the living room. Yet, as we crowded through the door, we only saw a table spread for dinner, meat and cheese and bread, but all untouched, and no one there. As though, when they sat down to eat, though they could even taste, alarm had come, and they in haste had risen and left the bread and meat, for at the table head a chair lay tumbled on the floor. We listened, but we only heard the feeble chirping of a bird that starved upon its perch, and, listening still without a word, we set about our hopeless search. We hunted high, we hunted low, and soon ransacked the empty house. Then o'er the island to and fro, we ranged to listen and to look in every cranny, cleft or nook, that might have hid a bird or mouse. But, though we searched from shore to shore, we found no sign in any place and soon again stood face to face before the gaping door and stole into the room once more as frightened children steal. I, though we hunted high and low and hunted everywhere, of the three men's fate we found no trace of any kind in any place but a door ajar and an untouched meal and an overtoppled chair. And as we listened in the gloom of that forsaken living room. A chill clutch on our breath, we thought how ill chance came to all who kept the flannel light, and how the rock had been the death of many a likely lad. How six had come to a sudden end, and three had gone stark mad, and one whom we'd all known as a friend had leapt from the lantern one still night, 
and fallen dead by the lighthouse wall. And long we thought on the three we sought, and what might yet befall. At Kurz a glance had brought to heel, we listened flinching there, and looked, and looked on the untouched meal and the overtoppled chair. We seemed to stand for an endless while, though still no word was said. Three men alive on Flannan Isle, who thought on three men dead. <laughs>